Josh? Yes. Uh, we've got feedback and Hannah's not even on. George. <laughs> Do you just want me to go? <laughs> George. You didn't, didn't say no. <laughs> at, at Don't Follow 1882 asks you specifically Amanda Staverley, would you? Group discussion, no. in my honest opinion. Was that well, the group discussion, in my honest opinion, added by you, Todge? Yeah, was it? I, I thought oh, it, it be was fun to right. So I've just read out on. right. So yeah, <laughs> it was. <laughs> so <laughs> have you just read out stage directions? <laughs> <laughs> I have. Yeah. Wait so, for wait for applause. <laughs> <laughs> so Amanda, Amanda Staverley, she's uh, she's by your door, and she's all she's wearing is uh, a pair of Gucci high heels, and she's Ooh. looking at you, you up and down. Josh, with those googly what? eyes she has got. Yeah. <laughs> what are you gonna do? What was that noise, by the way? That sounded like a squeaky fart. It's <laughs> uh... <laughs> Todd. That was that from was, you. Uh... You know what? It wasn't a fart. It was well, like your it was stomach. Like a poo's brewing. Uh, like, I kind of need a poo. Everything's all just kind of settling. That's the I've had a weekend of McDonald's me. and alcohol. All right, it just. Uh... If I need to run off, you know why. And order me a new chair. <laughs> Just a little squeak in the background. So what happens, right? Amanda's by your door. She turns her head to the right and she sees Todd taking a shit. <laughs> she sort of like rolls her eyes and then looks back at you, Josh. She's just she wearing it. There's that noise again. Wow. Are you going to explode? Right, Todd, by the time he gets to answer this, just go and have a shit. Right, she she doesn't wink at you. She's too classy for that. What she is it that you do? Spits on me. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. I'm just going to Google her just so I can get a good picture. I think she's an. I think I think she's an attractive older woman. Yeah. Tell you what, she is. She doesn't get the appreciation she deserves purely because on TV she's not done up as she. She doesn't look great on TV. But in some of these photos, I tell you what, I mean. I mean, oh, I found one. Uh, oh, can, there's one of her in a just... tight black leather dress. One minute. So you guys won't remember this. We are going to call this the Amanda Staverly Show. I'm putting this on our WhatsApp group. If you guys have ever seen the 1989 Batman film, in this picture, she looks like Jack Nicholson as the fucking Joker. Take a look at that. Nah. I mean, I reckon it's one of those, it's a five pint jobby. Five pint? Yeah, or, you know, like a ten to three. Ten to three in the morning. Well, I don't know. I mean, she's got potential, hasn't she? I mean, I, I wouldn't say... Uh, it's a tough one, because, like, on one hand, I wouldn't, the other hand, I would. There are some angles where she looks like Heath Ledger. She that, looks like the thing, she, she looks like two Jokers, guys. I've just posted the Jack Nicholson. Just take a look. By the way, this is great podcasting. If anyone out there, just please take a look. Well, just write Amanda Staverly and the first image of her wearing this classy black <laughs> suit. Black then, number. Yeah, and then take a just Google Jack Nicholson Joker, and if you don't think that they are twins, then there's something wrong with you. I'll tell you what, if you want to look at the picture, go down to the third row and then go to the sixth one across on Google sixth. Images. Google Images. So the first one is her in that Ooh. little black. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, is that the Amanda that I've got? Let me, let me... Or have I got the one that second row third across? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. She's all Should right. Can you say somewhere in the middle? In the middle, so we're going for uh, what picture should we look at? Hmm. Or oh, is this also like on like a condition where if you if you go through a bit, you'll invest into the club or not? 
No, no, we're going to get to that in a minute, right? Okay, so okay. you've said Apparently. you've said yeah. Let, let me just continue this this little this little story. So uh, Todd just flushed himself down the toilet by this point. He's just completely gone. The toilet's gone down with him. She's walked <laughs> over to you. You you if you like spread your legs open. She opens her legs and she sits facing you on your left. She, so she's sat down now on your left leg, and mm. she whispers in your ear. Where are the fish fingers? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this question came from George. Come on. Right? So that's what she whispers. <laughs> fish fingers. I said, I'll, I'll get you some in about five minutes, love. Open up. <laughs> <laughs> How many fish fingers are you putting up her, Jaxie? <laughs> I don't know. She looks like she's been through a few, to be fair. I mean, if you look at the top row... Uh, fifth picture across. She looks like she's just stuck a couple up there. <laughs> then she says, "Put another pack up there, and I'm buying a twenty five percent share." Would you? Yeah, but of course you would. Who wouldn't? Hundred percent, straight in there. Hey, I did get this shit out of my arsehole right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that bad. We, we lost our American, and where is this pod gone? Uh, <sighs> up the shitter, quite literally. <laughs> Down the shit. <laughs> What's that, right? Right, I, I think we should, if we actually said that we're on episode five. Uh, no, we haven't actually even introduced ourselves already. Right, so this is this is season <laughs> season two. What a prologue that was <laughs> of Hotspur Way episode five. Even though Tosh put episode four, it's because he didn't listen to me doing a sixteen-minute podcast on my own. Do you know how difficult that was, by the way, after the game? Harry around. Harry's scarf completely ditched me, and then did he? He, bought, you, oh, he was, like, was in Corsica. Do you know what my wife did? It was so funny. So I, 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 I'll say this to Harry's face when I meet him. Oh, did you don't listen to this. So Please she tell me she messaged him. No, 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 she didn't. Oh. She didn't do that. But she said, "Who who stood you up?" And I told her, and she went and found him, and she said, "But <laughs> she said, but he looks like he's 12. Why did you invite him on the show? <laughs> <laughs> and then she said to me, I, and then she like really had a go at me. Like, I listened to your podcast. She said, you can't have a 12. I said, he's 15. She goes, so what? He should be 18. Shame on you. She said, when we have kids, I'm never going to allow them to listen to the podcast. <laughs> and then she went into one. And it was like, hold on a minute. I've just done it on my own. Right, 16 minutes, bang on, by the way, 16 minutes. I had no idea what the fuck to talk about because everyone let me down. And now you're having a go at me. She goes, I, how dare you, she said. Do his parents know? And I, I said, you need, you need to speak to Josh. That's what you need to go and do. And so she what will I done? You, Why am I getting brought up? Because she, she knows that you and him have a thing, you know, a lover's tip. I've tiff. got a so, of married women, James. You, you don't want to send them my way. <laughs> I'm fine, trust me. So, uh, <laughs> so you've made this sound like the whole like nonce buster thing. Where I was like, she said she was twelve. <laughs> so I've got, I've got she in a world of twelve. I've got in a world of trouble. I've tried to throw Joss under the bus. That's not helped. So yeah, this is episode five, right? There you go, episode five. And uh, let's do some marketing. Doctor Pot- Doctor Totten do this all this. I don't know why they do it. I love the guys on Dr. Tottenham, but if you're listening to the pod, chances are you know you're listening to, Do- to Dr. Tottenham. So um, you can find us on X or Twitter or whatever you want to call it, at Hotspur Way Show and on Blue Sky, believe it or not. It's really boring there, by the way. Blue Sky? Oh, yeah, it's yeah. It's, it's Twitter, just without Twitter. But yeah, it's, it's, it's really it's boring. Yeah, I... I mean, look, we're going to get into the the haters later on, aren't we, Todd? That's that's. I mean, it was supposed to be Hannah's segment that her boyfriend won't let her come on the show, apparently. Yeah, what? She's been locked up again. Is that is that what it is? All right. Yeah. Should we talk a bit about Everton? Okay. Okay. Todd, you were there. I was there. Go on then. Over to you, mate. Um. Yeah, I thought it was a pretty. Pretty dominant display on the whole. Like, I mean, we all know Everton is shit, but like, we made them look really shit. Um, I can't remember any. I think I can remember one save Vicario had to make, and that's about it. Like, they, they did fuck all. 
I like, can't even remember that save. What save do you need? I remember when Harrison had a shot which he scuffed wide when it came over uh, came over from the um right hand side. I think it came from Odebear's like loose pass and he kind of like palmed it out and he got headed away. I might be getting confused between like two or three things. But uh, <laughs> one like solid chance they had. But yeah, on the whole everyone's rocking. I mean <laughs> there's one person who maybe wasn't quite on the same level as the others but on the whole the team did very very well and we shot on them basically. I will tell you why because you're going to say Brennan Johnson aren't you uh, I thought of everyone playing he had the least impactful game but I'm not saying he had a the bad thing is, game my re- no that's what I mean my reasoning for that is <clears throat> well, the, way, the way I see it is we targeted that Teenager, they put a uh, um, left back, right back. Sorry, so we just kept spent the whole time going down the other way. I mean, hmm. Johnson was feeding off scraps basically. So we just target in that. Um, is it Dixon? His name? I can't remember what his name was. I think no, it was no Dixon. one cares about him anyway. No, he'll be in like a He was, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, we obviously the entire game it was just going through Odebear because obviously he was the one that was on that side. So why would you go with the other way when you've got a player that's never played Premier League football on the other side? You just go down there, wouldn't you? Yeah, well, that that's the thing, isn't it? And you, you I mean, they did a couple of times try to double up on uh, Mikolenko with Johnson and Kulazewski, and that led to the first goal. Um, great redemption game by Basuma, by the way. I'd have to say, I think that's probably his strongest performance. He was very us. good, wasn't he? Oh, he was immense. Like he didn't, uh, from what I recall, anyway, he didn't have like one of his usual lapses. You know, didn't, he gave the ball away said, a couple of times. But then, but nothing silly though. If you know what? No, I know like shit challenges or tackles. He didn't have like an Aurier moment. No, <laughs> three foul throws in one game. Oh my god, that was so unreal. That was so unreal. <laughs> um, but yeah, really fucking good on the whole. I have to say, um, faultless even. I-, I dare to say our best performance under Ange. Definitely. Do you reckon? Do you say it was better than the Man United? I suppose the Man United won last season. They could easily have been three 0 up by the time we were, we scored our first goal, couldn't they? They missed the sitter <laughs> that, after sitter. <laughs> that's the thing. It was fucking rat face and the fucking Twitter Anthony. promo Shagger Rashford. Oh, and Anthony as well. Um, yeah, all of them were just. Sh- I mean, Anthony shit anyway, but all of them. Like they, they they were wasteful. Whereas this time we didn't actually concede any real chances. I think that's been a rarity un- under Ange. I think that's what the new additions to the coach staff are helping us out with. The only hindrance I'd say is the fact it was Everton, and they are fucking awful. I mean, did you... before, was it who did they paid first? Was it Brighton? And they got dicked by them as well, didn't they? <laughs> Did you see what happened by Brighton and them, man? Did you see what happened at Euston? Was it Euston? Yeah. <laughs> the Everton fans waiting for the players and they were just absolutely hammering them. Oh my god. Everton the fans are a different breed. They're just angry I think all the time. They are. I think they are like there are some similarities between us and Everton as football clubs. Um but the fan bases are, I I think we are generally the same, or at least some sections of the fan bases are just copy and pastes. Like, it's ridiculous. Like, I remember when we played like them at Goodison Park last year, when they played United after that whole points thing. Every little thing, the whole crowd was just booing, and it's like fucking. Hell. I know you live in Liverpool, but it's not that bad, surely. Like, but they do the um, Premier League um, song, don't they? When obviously the games just before the game started, and you've got that weird fucking Premier League, was it like theme tune? They boo oh, it's over a that, don't little they? Trumpet, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> That's it, yeah. But they start booing over that, don't they? Like, like the FA care. Oh, that's it. No one gives a shit about them. It's a tiny tin pot, fucking second club in a one fucking club. Well, city a nation, as they like to refer themselves as over there. I do genuinely hope this is the season they go down and they open their oh new stadium God. in the championship. That would if, be, oh, you know, you know that they'd be you know so that, fucked financially. I was going to say that they 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 could just disappear through the leagues. 
Oh, and I, I think, I no, I think that's a shame. No, I don't care. Fuck them. They were there during the 90s. They were never relegated. Go on, James, say it. <laughs> oh, I, they won no. the league in 1812. <laughs> Who gives in, a fuck? In, in the 80s, I think, mate. They sort of stopped us from winning it. But... I wasn't alive. Exactly. Then, so that's why I want count. them. That's why I want them to go down. I'm still hurting. Can we? <laughs> are we going to talk? I'm just looking at the the running order, and so your thoughts on the game. I think if you listen to the to the pod where I was doing it on my lonesome, there was only one what the fuck moment I thought, and that was in the first half. Do you remember that towards the end of the first half when they kept playing it back and then they they were pressing so much and Vicario? I mean. You know, first. Oh, that, yeah. But... He's nearly like tripped over the ball, it looked like, didn't it, or something? Yeah, that was something the only moment, happened. though. It was the only oh, moment. I was there at the end. I didn't really see it. Where were you in the in the south stand? Yeah. Where was Hannah? Ooh, hardcore. Oh, so you, hardcore so you, you were watching Mickey van der Ven run away from you? Yeah, it was quite just, heartbreaking, well, to be honest. <laughs> just <laughs> grabbed the ball and just sprinted down the other end. <laughs> it was like when it's like you see that one kid who's like too overly developed in your year group try and play and he <laughs> just, just fucking runs around through all the little kids <laughs> literally that's what it was like it was many against boys watching that <laughs> it was majestic though, wasn't it just, but the thing is though, it doesn't where he's so like long it doesn't look like he's running fast because he's his strides are so long so like all these other people running next to him, sprinting, their little legs moving, and it's just him like a gazelle, just galloping <laughs> down the middle. <laughs> That's the thing. I was also comparisons earlier. I think it was like people say it's like a reverse of like the Vatongan assist for the Son goal. Literally, <laughs> it's like Mickey's like done all the work, just fucking dragged his bollocks. I don't know how much that weighs, but it, you know it must slow him down a fair amount. Did you see and... what he did in the first half as well? Like hyper extended his knee. Yeah. Oh, to be it. fair, I can do that with my elbow. So I don't know. Yeah, but you won't be reacting like the way he was. He was like on the floor crying. I, because I'm I not thought it was a meniscus. I'm not a but footballer. I, th- I thought I thought he had done his meniscus. That's what I thought. So, you know, that was it. Should we should we do you a little exercise? Flex. Should we do a little exercise? Right. If you're listening to this, if you're still with us, just go on to, to Twitter and write Ange out. In search. Or in search or as a search. No, I mean you can do that as well. I'm just gonna do it on my laptop because All right. see my phone's in the other room now. Oh, that's an interesting top result. <laughs> do you write flange out by the chance? <laughs> no, I wrote hands out. <laughs> and what did you see? <laughs> We're four points off relegation. That one. No, no, I'm gonna send this to the group. <laughs> All right. Oh, my phone's in the other room. Oh, right, that, you, you can you can you can oh, just no. listen. You can you can just listen, right? That's fine. Um, oh, I said this wow. Thing. <laughs> okay. There's an there's an oh, it's a, anime porn. You know what your search history is like. So I, I oh have, wow, is it? <laughs> I wouldn't have searched that on on Twitter, mate. I, I wouldn't be like advertising it either. Oh my god, that is so fucking funny. It's so random. Because everything else is normal. So if you go th- if you go if you go through like let's move on from the anime porn. If we if you go through it all, I don't know if these guys are bots or just uh being sarcastic. But you know what I do find interesting? If you go if you if you if you make if you had made a list of when we drew one all with Leicester and you had searched for Ange out there and you try and find some of those top accounts, they're not saying Ange out anymore. So are we just putting this down to people just being frustrated and uh, like going way overboard or what? What is it? Oh, it, it's people with just sad, pathetic little lonely lives with nothing better to do. Or and nothing else to look forward to, that just have to vent their frustrations at being so shit and uninspiring, and just a complete waste of oxygen. Um, 
in the world. And they just need to take those frustrations out somewhere. And it's Twitter. Um, I'd like to name this individual. Yeah. Um, at uh, East North London, spell uh, EST North LDN. Um, he is quite fucking something. Um, mm-hmm. I'm looking at him so, now. Yeah, it, it's some fucking account. I'd say that he's. Uh, where was he? he? Had a tweet when. Uh, so he tweeted this on the twenty second in the morning, eight thirty eight a.m. Like, aren't you like commuting at that time, or like getting ready for work, like a normal individual? And he says, when Everton rock up and make us look silly this weekend, a lot more people will join me on the and out train. And then he posted a gif of, uh, I think it's James from Thomas the Tank Engine. Um, and then Carl Banner replies, says, I've been the driver since day one. <laughs> I just think how, like, he do not, like, how shit must your life be that you can't even look forward to a football game? Or like, not, not think, you know what? We might do all right. Everton are really shit. We just gonna, might, I'm right? Support, I'm going to support my team. But like I'm sort of meant to do as a as a supporter. It, the clues are the fucking title, you prick. <laughs> so you know that that tweet that you found earlier and you posted on the group, the at Tottenham away World of Hotspur account, the one where you must have seen this. Um, and oh, Billy, Billy's probably listening to this, mate. I'm disappointed in you. So it's the one where you've, I'm sure you've seen it if you're on Twitter. If, you, if, you're, if you're on Blue Sky, you definitely haven't seen it. You've probably seen people knitting. But if you are on Twitter, you would have seen a street shop outside of our ground where you have the Spurs logo, then in the middle you have NFL, and then you have the Formula One Drive London. And people are losing their heads about this. They are... I mean, do you want to tell us what you've seen, Todge? Oh, just severe, severe head loss. And it's not even got like an ounce of sense to it. Like, I mean, this uh, TTB Spurs uh, 89 um, saying, this is not on, with like fucking sirens next to it. Like, right, a fan base that pays 1,400 quid for a season ticket with no trophy in 16 years, this is what they give us. Most fans would be ripping the his logo logos down. Not us. But I mean, hang on. If you're outraged and you're talking about ripping them down, don't fucking rip them down. If you're so outraged, if you're so motivated, if you're so against the club trying to make money to buy better and more players that you also want them to do, um, yeah, be my guest. Show some action. Don't fucking rant and chat bollocks on Twitter for a couple of likes for some other people with severe issues. Um, What do you want the club to do for a shop that sells some NFL merchandise as part of their multi-year agreement with us? And for the go-kart track that we have in our other partnership with Formula One, which for the go-karting, the club shop is where you arrive to take part in it. What do you want them to do? Just not have some signs up or people get lost and <laughs> lose deals because they won't sort of fucking start advertising. Like, where where do you draw the line on these kind of, like, sponsorship arrangements? Like, shirt sponsors? Do you draw it on, like, the match day infographics? Do you draw that line on the hoardings around the stadium, on the big screens? Where they put some advertisements on. Do you get rustled with that as well? Say, no, it's only advertising Totten. What about the sponsors on the pitch? What about those where they've sort of painted the, the sponsors on the dugout? Does that does that start to rattle you as well, you little fucking baby? It's like when people get rattled by AIA being written in red on the shirt. Oh, don't. <laughs> they wouldn't have got rattled at the fucking Thompson sponsor or the Manison yeah. poker one. Like, oh, that was a proper kit back then. That all their sponsors are always written in, ro- in white on their shirt. They've always got white stripes <laughs> on their shirt. <laughs> exactly. It's fucking pathetic. I, 
I'm trying to think of an analogy. An, oh, I can't even say the word. An analogy, right? So just tell me, if, uh, tell me if this is correct. Uh, Josh, you wake up. You know that your name is Josh. You're seven foot five. How tall are you? Eight foot, is it? Six five. Right there, you Close go. Up. Um, you, you're an ankle snapping dude, and you know what you are, right? Are you comfortable in your own skin, as most human beings should be? And instead of going to one specific pub, I, I think this analogy has gone down the toilet, but you go to another one. Do you then expect people, your your mates, to go, what, what, what are you doing? What, you're not being Josh anymore. You're someone else. Or you wear a different T-shirt. I'm not saying Arsenal, obviously not. But you a wear something t-shirt. else. <laughs> right, I don't well, know. You wear different T-shirts every day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. But you, you, I'm trying to, uh, the point I'm trying to make is that who cares? You've not done a very good job at making any point. I don't know where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what you're That's talking why about. I can't, I can't do podcasts without Hannah. This is the problem. So I, I don't understand what people want. And also, if you take a look at this picture of maybe 40 people outside the stadium, none of them care. None of them are trying to rip these things off the, uh, off the side of the building. We're still selling a thousand shirts to Koreans every every home game. We're still making we're printing money basically. What would they want? What what do these people want? Do they want us mid table? Twitter would probably explode if we were mid table. What this I don't I, I don't get what they want. That's what I don't understand either. I'm like the club takes steps to improve the revenue streams to try and, you know, take the club forward. And you know, everyone moans about you know like transfer fees and whatnot, but um, the average transfer fee has practically tripled or quadrupled, I'd say, since the sort of bail era, when you know a big signing was like twenty five million pounds. Like that used to be a big, big deal back in the day. Um, Can I just interrupt? Oh, Can I just interrupt? Did you just do an electric poo? No, I've oh, got yes. a um, I've got a wrist, I know a zip tie in my oh. hand. I'm just playing with. See, <laughs> I thought I thought Todd had just said fuck it. I'm not going to the loo. I'm just going to let it out of here. And his internet went for the time being, and he had he had like a Dalek poo. That's what I thought. No, no, no. Oh, I just got... Sorry, mate. Please, please continue. <laughs> oh, I, I do. Hope I remember the first like transfer. No wiper, the, the first like transfer that really blew my mind. It wasn't the Ronaldo one because I sort of expected that because he was mental anyway. But the Fernando Torres to Chelsea one for fifty million. I thought that was nuts when it happened. I thought, 50 million? Fuck! No, and it was the one... Was Andy Carroll for 50 yeah, million. Yeah, yeah, that was... It was 35. That was the one that came next. That's the one that I started laughing at. Oh, they replaced Torres with Andy Carroll, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. Wow. That was so but cool. I, I don't... But then they also I, got Suarez that same window, didn't they? So, was it that same window? I'm sure it was. After. Just to wrap up this point, right, with the stuff yeah. that's going on outside the stadium, I want to ask this question. Have any of you seen Welcome to Wrexham? I'm really into that, by the way. I've started nope. watching it recently. No, I've really advised... Disney Plus, any rights? Oh, I, I'm in Cyprus, which just download everything illegally. It's fine. But uh, oh, if, you, if you watch that, I can't imagine a Wrexham fan saying, we're, in, we're non-league and how dare you get United Airlines to sponsor us. You fuckers. Ryan <laughs> and, and McIlvenny how, and Rob, <laughs> how fucking dare you do that? Oh my God, you put another sponsor out. What are you doing to our club? We're the third oldest club in the world. We've got the, we've got the oldest international stadium. How fucking dare you put some sponsorships outside? Why are you doing this to us? But you know what? We've got a bunch of entitled fuckwits who just want to make noise. And that's what it is. That's it. But it seems to be that being negative for literally being the sake of being negative, like... It's like Hannah said last week. So if you're negative all the time, you can't be wrong in a way. Because obviously, if you get proved wrong, it's good. Because, as they say, for example, you say, oh, Swanky's going to be fucking shit, la da 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 And he ends up scoring loads. You're going to be fucking buzzing because he's scoring loads. But if he is shit, you'll be like, I told you he was shit. I was there first. I was ahead of the curve. That's what it is. It's just a safety net, really, isn't it? Just back yourself when it does eventually go tits up. Or if it does go tits up. Oh, yeah. It just screams insecurity. And just, like, just absolute pest, 
pessimism of the highest degree. Like, I, I just don't get it. It doesn't make sense. Like, you're a supporter a smile. of a football club. Just fucking smile for a change. It's like That's they wake thing, up like... and they just think, Oh, Brennan Johnson's at my club! <laughs> That's the worst one. Though. There's, that guy, there's a guy on Twitter called Tomo1882. Oh and my literally... fucking god, Larry <laughs> Stein on that prick. If you go on to his Twitter page, go on his Twitter now, go on his account, <clears throat> and then you know when you can search their tweets, can't you? Yeah. So just type in his search, um, just type in Johnson, and then just watch how much you can scroll. <laughs> oh my god, it is fucking head loss. Like, it I goes know on, I was, on and on season, and on. But fucking hell, he's a different breed. And it's it's just everything with him as well. Like again, every little decision, I, I do not get it. Like we're a business first and foremost. Like if you're so fucking set on a football club being a proper football club, mate, um, go go to non-league. But watch even there, like you know they're still trying to do the same thing. Sponsors trying to grab money every avenue possible to try and sustain themselves better. But it's what the game is. Accept it or fuck off and go follow rugby or some shit. No. Not for me. I don't I don't get it. I don't, I don't get it. Right, listen, this is a perfect time for us to go for the first ever break on the Hotspur Way show. So we'll be back oh. in a moment. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, we'll be back in a moment. One of us is getting fired. <laughs> <laughs> See you in a sec. Or well, 28 seconds, bye. And What's we're happening? back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so confused. Did you two plan something? Or... <laughs> no, no, it's fine. It's fine. You, you'll get it's it fine. one day. Yeah, yeah. No, I hope, I hope you, I've got I hope, anxiety now. I hope you like the ad. <laughs> Wait, have you just Thanks inserted it? Like, ah, oh, I don't know what's happening here. It's fine, you don't have to worry about it. When I was a lad, this may seem odd. I'd slip the fish fingers, prime fillet of cod. Bird's eye fish fingers have been such hits, because they're real cod fillet, never full of grey bits. And they're bigger than most and tastier. That's why I am the captain of the fish finger. No, so you've done something. We're back. I'm just gonna, I, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna realise when I listen to this tomorrow, <laughs> when I find out you put in like a sound clip of me doing something weird or something, or we don't have to put sound <laughs> clips in. You, you start at the beginning of the pod and you continue all the way through. So wait, we, what do um... I say at the beginning? <laughs> <laughs> Every pod. No, is I've fine. got anxiety now. I need to. Need... <laughs> I need to... <laughs> I need to open your... a window. <laughs> Todd, like, do you want to read off? My the palms questions. are getting sweaty. He's going to start fucking clicking his ankles out of anxiety. Oh, I'm sweating. I need, know, I need to know. I need to know. I can't. You'll have my to autism, listen. My <laughs> autism is not letting me get through. I need to know. Go Stop start counting to... some beads and put them in colour order or something, mate. <laughs> oh, honestly, oh, no. I don't like this. Read the question, Todd, from uh, what's his name? I'm not oh, from, from, from Eero. <laughs> Big E, dog. Um, Big E, that's one of my favourite plugs. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, where are we? So, on a scale of 1 to 10, how disappointed are you that Oasis are not performing in the Tottenham toilet, but Catfish and the Bottleman are? I don't care. Can I, ad- <laughs> can I admit that I don't know who Catfish and the Bottlemen are? Too fair, they're You're not, not missing out. They're, uh, I, 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 if I heard one of their songs, I would not be able to tell you it was them that did it. It's it, yeah, it's very generic, and every song sounds like the exact same to another. And Unpopular opinion, I reckon that's the same as Arctic Monkeys. All their songs sound the same, but carry on. I, I'd say anything post AM has been very like. Eh. See, I don't. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not an Arctic Monkeys fan. Not they don't do it for me. Not a fan. I like them in moderation. I've got to be in the mood for it. You just don't do it for me. 
Yeah, no. Alex I mean, Turner. I don't know. What... Don't care. <laughs> I mean, Mark for my two cents for what it's worth. I think who's got a um, always... lorry reversing into their kitchen? What Are was you sure Tom's just not stolen yours? <laughs> <laughs> Loaded up with. Ch- I was gonna say children, and that would be bad. I did. The Romanians are getting their revenge on you, mate. Yeah, you geeks up. <laughs> it's all over. So what's the answer to the questions? I don't know who they are. So I know who we're. I don't care obviously. personally. I'd say look. I'm not going to see either. So I don't care. <laughs> Oh god, it, it was sick to have Oasis. Like, I mean, having like you know, uh, like Oasis, Beyonce, and Guns and Roses, Travis Scott, all at your stadium, all in like no, Lady Gaga. I don't forget her. Sick. And Pink, or put exclamation mark and look, uh, she likes to call herself <laughs> um, the branding. Very clever. Um, yeah, it, it's fine. Like, it's just money in it. <laughs> That's how I see these things. Like, yay. That that's going to be another Archie Gray in the bag, or like a a better chance on a deal for someone. Um, hmm. I like some of their music for Cash to the Bottom, but the whole Oasis thing, like the one thing that's really driving my tits, is all these like sort of thirty to forty year olds being like, oh, you can only see them if you started saving your pension. You can only oh, see the entitled them. people. Oh, you can only see them if you've does. had all their albums. <laughs> Exactly. Like you only see them if you fucking start collecting Liam Gallagher's pubes. Like, it gets <laughs> fuck off, man. <laughs> it's just some music. If you if you can't afford a ticket, don't fucking go. If you know, if you don't want to sort of compete for a ticket, fuck off. Uh, it's pretty simple, really. Um, and this all would have been sort of stupid haircut, aren't they? Oh, get the get the Parkers out. Some sunglasses yeah. in broad. Put their hands like. behind their back every time they talk. I've you got a, it. I've got a better answer for Eri. Sending better questions, mate. Let's move on to Newcastle <laughs> away on Sunday. Josh, are you gonna? Yes, sir. Are you gonna watch that one? What time is it? What time's kick off? One uh, thirty. Yeah. No, I will be at work. Oh, I'm working oh, until you, three. Space. Right, so, so it's, it. it's either Hannah or. Todd, you're on the uh, reaction pod with me then. For that one. Oh, hey. Hey. I know. Should we be scared? I was at first, but their first two games, they have been very stinky. They struggled against a 10 man Southampton, and they were. Who did they play last? Bournemouth. They were very stinky against Bournemouth. Um. Knowing us, we will go up there and get tonked 6 0, and that would be expected because I think we're at the back of our heads, we're all expecting a tonking because the last two times we've been there, we have been crucified. But <laughs> the way they've played the last two games, they have fucking reeked uh, to the point I'm thinking about getting Isaac out of my FPL, but I'm keeping him in for this weekend because it's against <laughs> us. <laughs> it's inevitable. <laughs> yeah, so I'm keeping him in there. So you know it's going to happen. Um, oh, exactly. But I've even I've even put a dogie on the bench. That's how <laughs> confident Jesus. I am we're going to get stuffed. <laughs> You're shook. But, uh, yeah, I've had PTSD from the last two trips out there. Um, but it's just I don't know. If we win, I don't reckon we're going to. It won't be a convincing win. If you know what I mean, it'd be like an end to end two one or something like that. Who is dinging? Because mm. that needs to stop. But if we lose, we'll get absolutely piped. Like, can I, I just know, yeah. piped can, right I, now. can I just interrupt? You know, I, I believe in simulation theory, right? And I'm pretty sure that there is a bug in the matrix right now because Todd, can you hear anything of the stuff that, like Josh keeps saying, who's backing up a truck? Who's the only person making noise? Some, is you? My daughter just come in the room and she started talking, so I was like waving my hand, saying, "Go away." <laughs> I know, but there's been no... out, just fucking <laughs> yeah. around the room. <laughs> but there's you been like no builder on her, <laughs> just buy her yeah. fucking pigtails. <laughs> guys, guys, there, there's been no truck reversing. There's been no pinging. I don't know what's going on. You know, there's this hiss coming from you as well, continuously. We've proven it. You weren't, you wouldn't have known this, guys. But I don't know if you can actually hear it once we do the production of this. But uh, Josh didn't believe that the hissing was from him, so we actually did a little group exercise, didn't we, Todd? We did, and, yeah. Uh, when we, we, we proved science. it was, yeah, 
Yep. And um, maybe I should apologise to Hannah because the feedback that's coming, I think, is also from Josh, 100%. And, oh, no. uh, I've lost my safety net. Hannah was my <laughs> escape route. Now, if Hannah's your safety net and escape route, mate, fucking hell. <laughs> fuck <laughs> mate, fuck you know, me. I don't, yeah, I don't know where you go from here. It's... <laughs> that's rock not rock bottom. bottom. Friend. <laughs> so, anyway, what's yeah. everyone else's Newcastle thoughts? I've done mine and then you've just ripped into me. <laughs> yeah had my fun now can i go I, yeah go on you go, you go. <laughs> yeah. i mean don't leave the pod just uh have a oh, go at the, the yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, fuck almost got out of it um i think the thing with newcastle is they play in a way that really shafts us um it, it's what fulham sort of do as well that mid block good on the counter exploiting space um i think what i would note is Mainly their form of recent in the Premier League hasn't been astounding against sort of much sort of big opposition. I would say. I mean, the, the, I mean, the, they just can't beat Southampton. They drew with Bournemouth after getting sort of a bit battered. They beat a half pissed up Aston Villa on the final day. They lost to City. They lost to Luton to Nottingham Forest. They lost, what was it? Yeah, three, three nil again to Everton. They're not, they're not on a good run, I would say, in the league. And I think time is slowly ticking for Eddie Howe. Um, and there's not been much investment or improvement over the summer uh, when they're sort of struggling on FFP side. So I think it will be a edgy game. Um, they are still dangerous when they do have the ball in that final third. So, yeah. I, I think we should win, but it, it'll be a bit squeaky. So what do you think the score's going to be? What's your prediction? I'm going to say 1-0. One nil. One nil to us. us? Yeah. So you've gone back to the, taken us back to the Atuba days then, have you? <laughs> You've gone for a clean sheet as well. I just, I, I don't know if they'll. I think we'll just Vicario will have a bit of a masterclass. You reckon Van der Ven will stay on his feet this time? <laughs> Our defenders always get like caught in the worst fucking positions. It's like Sanchez away to City under Mourinho. Oh no, that's at home, wasn't it? I swear that when, when we're at Wembley, I swear that was when Sanchez no, was like eating the turf. <laughs> No, that was sick. That was away at City in the league. We lost three nil. <laughs> apparently, the players were saying like Jose was shit in the dressing room for trying to motivate them at half time. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was I. Like, you know. Oh, there's the ankle you snap. What? I'm glad they're back. <laughs> right. Uh, look, there's so Hannah says two two. Johnny, we we went to his funeral. It was really sad, and so we'll... I had a great time. I don't know about you. Yeah, well, um... yeah, it wasn't bad. Um, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna miss him. But I, I threw threw a couple of planes onto his coffin. <laughs> <laughs> I got eagles shit all over it after. <laughs> eagles shit, but but so you know, you know. When I'm in the village every weekend, right? There are eagles there, and I didn't know there were eagles even in Cyprus, but you know there are, and they're massive. When they shit, it's not like standard bird shit; it's like dog shit falling out the sky. Oh God! <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, said, it's, uh, I couldn't believe it. It's literally dog. It landed on my car, and I didn't know what it was. It was like a dog, a flying dog, shat on it. Yeah. So anyway, that's <laughs> that's a bit of useless information for you, but. Uh, I want to get to My say something. Is not prepared after this. Going, <laughs> going back to going back to the Everton game. Did did you guys see a? There's two things actually, because it sort of leads into the Newcastle thing. It, I realised that Andrew tweaked things. Did you see any of that? Any of the tweaks um, at all? We didn't seem more, as gung ho as usual. We didn't. Seemed right? a bit more. We seemed a bit more covered. If anything was to like break if you know what I mean so that definitely I don't know if you noticed but in the first half 
Some were supposed to be playing as a nine, right? He was a false eight. Could you, did any of you notice that? Yeah, when he, he was, was dropping in. Really deep. He was doing what Kane used to do. Really, mm. really deep. And I thought... Oh, I don't reckon Son should do that because the ball just bounces off of him. He, he's, I no, think he's better running on, onto mate. a pass than bringing the pass in. But he can oh. do it all. But he did that later, right? Yeah, don't Against get me wrong. He's, he's always better running in behind. But I thought what was, what was good, not just Son, I'd say the whole forward line were really good at the rotations. And the the attacking midfielders as well, like it was so fluid, and I think that just really helped with the ball retention, which has been one of our big issues under Ange so far. I think Odebear really helped with that, and if he can retain I think the having ball a lot better, back as well, he looked a lot yeah, more stable. He was immense. Romero was immense. Van de Ven was immense. Like we, we just didn't give them a chance, basically, and it all it all come from our pressing was spectacular. And then the movement of the front three, three to retain the ball but still be aggressive with possession. I think that's what's really nailed it for us. Yeah, I I think... So that was one of the, the switches. I don't know if you guys saw it on your feed. So in Cyprus, we get the international one. And there was another thing where it was really interesting. Um, I should have said this actually on the, on the other pod. But um, one of the coaches... Whenever we had a whenever we had a set piece, was coming out and screaming at him. I don't. It, it's one of the new ones. I don't know who it was. Um, I don't know one of the two new ones that joined. So I noticed I think that it's I was Montgomery. right. I was about to. So I had written down for my notes for this, you know, lonesome pod that I'm really I don't understand. Even though this guy was screaming at him, what we're doing at corners, and then I wrote that down on the 69th minute. Right. And then we scored on the 70th. Actually, I wrote it down just before that, you know, Romero's goal went in. I've got a feeling against Newcastle, we're going to see a slightly different Spurs. Benton calls back. It should be right. I don't know. We don't get updates from his wife anymore. They're still together. <laughs> so, I, yeah, if, if he's back, then I've got a feeling that we're, we may see a bit more counter-attack in play against them because Ange doesn't suffer falls twice does he what do you reckon the midfielder be if Bentacle is back I've got a feeling I've got a feeling that it will be Bentancourt Bissouma and uh, and what's his name Hannah's boyfriend Madison Matters yeah yeah that's what I can see as well and I think it'd be good to have Bissouma and Bentico sitting together rather than just one of them um, again, I mean, you could do it if they're you know, solid enough with ball progression. Maybe even have Kulazewski in the middle as well. It's like, again, that sort of stronger, so more physical. Is Newcastle's midfield. They've got King, Tenali, Joe Linton, who should have been sent off. Well, he's not going to be match fit, let's be honest. He can still come on making impact. If he is in the squad, that is. Joe, if he's got a bet, probably got a bet on. Is Longstaff? I think Longstaff plays a fair bit these is days. Cra- is it Kraft? Whatever his name is, was he a defender? Emil Kraft. Joel Linton, he's a fucking brick shit house. He's more technical. I don't understand so. how he was never sent off, by the way. Well, I didn't see, see it. what he did again. No, Do you I not? didn't see oh, it. Oh no. my goodness. He literally got. Was it the goalkeeper? I think it was the goalkeeper's running out with the ball in his hands. And then Joel Linton's literally. Grabbed him round the throat and thrown him to the ground. It is was he... ridiculous. Yeah, it is mental. And I thought that was a Wolves player. No, no it Nelly. was Newcastle Bournemouth. And what did VAR do? Or is VAR not getting involved anymore? Unless it's uh, no, unless, they don't do anything anymore. Unless they believe it's a handball when it clearly wasn't. You know? Did you see? So we've completely oh, we do, who topic. forgot Todd? We forgot Bruno Gamarish. <laughs> How have we he not him. mentioned him? Did we? Well, I didn't. So you must have. You did. <laughs> you did. No, it wasn't me. I said. I didn't say him. I said um, Joe Linton, Croft, and that was it. I don't think who I said. You definitely mentioned Bruno. I never said. I never said Bruno. Oh, and you'll see that. On eight hours of sleep in fucking 
48 hours, all right? Give Kelly some slack. Their bench even sucks as well. They've got Almiron, Harvey Barnes, Murphy, Os- who the fuck is Osula? John, They've... is that John Ruddy? It can't be John Ruddy, surely not. Who's it that? is John Ruddy. No. no. <laughs> Matt Target, yes, Trippier do. and Willock. Yeah, this is the yeah. thing, like, the players aren't spectacular, but they all do sort of just play well against us. Can we... Um, uh, yeah, sorry, mate. I thought you'd finish your point. Please continue. Oh, Basically, so <laughs> can you wrap it up, James? <laughs> I'm trying to save your intestines and your and your, and your bowels. Right, so, mate, I've got a foul fart brewing, so... I, that. <laughs> I... Just to take this back to what we were discussing about... There you are. No Shut way. up. Shut up. <laughs> there is no way. That sounded like a creepy oh, chair. Oh, that's, <laughs> that, that's an Uzi. Do you know what an Uzi is, guys? Just watch Rambo. It's a but gun. That, uh, <laughs> taking it back to what what we were discussing earlier, right? Where oh, how, dare, how dare the club do what they do. Newcastle are owned by... Uh, let's just say the richest people on the planet. Right? They are. It's a, it's a fact. Richest people on the planet. It would be Qatar. Are they richer Qatar. than the... Is it the, the mate of Brun- Sultan of Brunei? Have they got more money than them? Sultan of Brunei is not rich anymore compared to... Like, Ka- Qatar's the richest country right. in the world, right? But Qatar don't own a football team, do they? Not yet, anyway. More on that, maybe on yeah, another is point. Is it not that they own PSG? That's why they're Qatar. No, but they don't own a Premier League club, so... Oh, I see, sorry. Right, you should be. So, what the, the the thing the thing is, right? Newcastle are trying everything under the sun to to bring in money, but they they don't have Daniel Levy running the show, and they've lost Josh's girlfriend as well now. So, hmm. where where I mean, I don't hear their fans saying, "Well, why are you why are you doing this and why are you?" I don't hear it. So I don't know. Is it just? I suppose all fans are the same at some point. But Newcastle Fickle. haven't Newcastle haven't won a, haven't won a trophy for sixty years, is it? Uh, you don't think my dad was born the last time he won a trophy? Oh, so six, so sixteen years then, right? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, that's such a cheap. You set that one up for me. I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have done it. <laughs> Why is? <laughs> I'm not even going to try. Um, you shouldn't. No, it was terrible. It was ter- it's not a dad joke. You should give me like kudos. This for doesn't that. make sense because I know, I know it doesn't. Me. Oh, yeah, but so because you're in bed. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I mean, you. you were, no, I, I didn't. I think. I think we're going to win. I think we are not going to concede. I hate when I do that because then we concede after like the first minute, and it's like, why did I say that? I think we're going to win two 0 and and what you're going to have is the next day, and me and uh, and Todd or Hannah on the on the reaction pod saying, "Oh, wasn't that professional?" We'll be known as the professional team, and then you'll have Sky Sports and the overlap, and everyone saying, "Oh, we didn't know Ange had that in him." You know, these are people who are paid millions who are supposed to be pundits, and oh. he tweaks every game. By the way, I don't know if you noticed that. I mean, we do. We watch the games. Yeah. Josh, what are you doing? Are you doing some DIY now? Sorry, I've I think I've got autism. I am just I just need to play with things while I'm <laughs> I've got I'm, I'm literally what I'm holding right now is I don't even know what this is. It's like a, a pipe of some description. <laughs> but you can extend it. Let listen. We don't need to know what doing down there. <laughs> oh god. Right, so this is a question for you then, Josh. This is at Moondragon fifty one. Um That's a great name, you... by the way. Do you think we'll get any more signings in? What do you think we could do with... I've heard um, on the grapevine we could probably get a maximum of two more in. And um, what do I think we could do with? A left-back option. Because if Adogi's dead, dead, that's it. We've got Ben Davies there and we're now, we'll are now we just get rinsed at left-back. And possibly... A s- more centre back cover because I don't think Dragusin is enough on his own to cover. So I have a problem. What was with that? that? <laughs> Again, like what simulation. There's nothing, mate. It's it's all on I you. I heard someone screaming, like someone had just been stabbed. That was yours? That was no, your no. Name, it was coming from you. Yeah. So anyway, no, I've wasn't. got. So I've got a problem with what you just said. 
and uh, I don't I don't care if all of you hate me for this. If you want to go and sign a left back and you want someone who's cover for Udogi, are you saying? Maybe you're not saying this, Josh, but I know that many other people are, that you want him to be at least, what, 50% as good as Udogi? Maybe 60%, 70% as good? Um, I just want him to be capable of playing football. I don't care how good he is. As long but as ben, if he ben, ends up being better than Udogi, then I suppose Udogi will have to but, take the L. But Ben Davis is, you know, can play football. Yeah, right. but not to what we, this, what we need in Angeball, as it were. Oh, I, I, Okay. Let's it's say we bring some, but can I just, uh, before you get coming with your intriguing moment, right? We bring someone in who's 23 years old, let's say, uh, between eight, 19 and 23, right? Between that five year window. And he plays four games because the doggy isn't injured. And in those four games, he doesn't really learn much. We don't really see anything from him. This is why I think a signing like this needs to be done at the end of the season. I think someone like. Simicas from Liverpool, he barely fucking plays, but he does a job. Do you know what I mean? Someone like but that. I, I would, would, would I have Davis over Simicas? Yes. All right, and I'm half Greek, and I, yeah, I, 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 I'd, I'd have, I'd have the Welsh, the Welsh bugger over him. I, I just that sounds so racist, doesn't it? I don't mean that. I mean it in a really nice way, right? I, who, who are we going to bring in? Right. I, I don't know. Todd, you're the expert on on players. You play enough FIFA and champion football manager. <laughs> what what are we what are we doing here? Because I think the only player we should and there's a leading question by the way, so get ready for it. I think the only player that we should bring in is no one. Is there a player yeah. called no one? You, you carry on. <laughs> you know, there used to be a player called Noon. Friend... I played for Cardiff. I was gonna say it's gonna be some like French bloke currently playing for like. Tolu or something and it'll be called N and then apostrophe <laughs> oh, um, uh, they'll just bring back the, the heritage signings um, but it, it's a difficult one because I think and it, it happens to a lot of players I think you've seen it with like Trevor Chalibur at Chelsea and I think Ben Davies in the current position at Spurs where he's a fine backup centre back and a fine backup left back but I think Ange, as brilliant as he is, he's a little bit confused perhaps as to what he wants out of this player. Because I keep seeing people, and like Alice Gold saying as well, saying, oh, we should, you know, we can sign like a, a left back, centre back hybrid. But I'm like, Ben Davies is that? And that's what throws me. I'm like, he's he can do the draw at both sides. And so it's, well, do you take that gamble to then put the money in a midfield investment? Or. You know, do you go and get that extra left back or centre back? But then you have to make a real decision on how you want Ben Davies to play. Do you keep him as that centre back or the left back? Like, what do you do in that scenario? Because um, I think he's more suited to be in the centre back, but he's just naturally better as the left back. So it's an intriguing role. And I, that's something I generally don't have an answer for. I just, I, I don't know. I, I, I just got a feeling that we've, we've finished our spending for this season and let the data analysis team and the people who do the eye test, aka scouting department, just look for players that maybe we can add, let's say, a backup in January and then bring in three, four players maybe one or two who complement the squad, or I mean, not the squad, the actual first team, in uh, in the close season. That's what I think. I, I think we're, we're done with it. And when you've got too many people and you have to try and manage them, it's, it's hell. It really is. Unless one comes through and he's so outstanding. Like I say, for instance, we signed Gareth, we signed some, someone like Gareth Bale just before he became fantastic. And so like, we sign him and then the next week he turns into Gareth Bale, then obviously, yeah, bring him in, right? And the manager will, will be happy to have a player like that. But you've got Dragusin who sat there not doing much. I'm sure he'll play maybe, I'm sure we get maybe one and a half thousand, two thousand minutes this season. He'll get but, cup games, I reckon, more than anything. Yeah, of course yeah. he will. Of course he will, right? Uh, we'll keep and his agent quiet. <laughs> oh, I can't wait for this international break. He's going to be running his mouth. But yeah, I just I just think we're done. I think we're done with the transfers. I'm done with it. I'm bored with this. 
I don't know, I'm getting old. I'm bored of all of this, really. Just be done with it. I'm bored of listening to Last Word on Spurs transfer pods, which I'm going to be listening to until they close the window. You know, and then they'll have one called a reflection pod. What, what did we do? Well, we, I mean, what the hell? You know, I'm just... But it's, 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 we, we did what we did and that's it. You know, there's no point talking about it anymore. So I'm sorry to like burst your bubble. Moon Dragon 51. John Pagan Witch Tories out. I think it's talking to you, James. But it yeah. is what it is. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, I think yeah. we're done. There is one more question, but I think we're done. Hannah's not here to beg for reviews. If You don't have to leave us a review, although it would be nice. And if you do leave us a review, promise to read it out next week. But you have to leave us a really saucy one. So, for instance, something that you just would never tell your mum, right? Or your missus. Or, or confession or your husband. Yeah, just leave us, leave us a review. Make sure it's five stars, please. That really helped. And then leave us something that's super saucy. DM us and say, oi, sunshines, that's the one I left. Read it out. And we will. Okay. And, we'll send a uh, screenshot of your review to who we should send it we should send it to sue hannah's mum hasn't she's not had any action from us for a long time oh god that didn't come (laughs) out right did it what i'm trying to say sue if you are listening is we've not talked about you for a very long time and um your daughter's now now she's got her man she's like i don't know she's behaving she's forgotten about us Yeah. yeah she's dull she's not interested she's boring she doesn't care. Well, it might not even be that. It might be the fact that Harry has actually got her locked away in a basement, strapped up, strapped in. Maybe, maybe all these noises you're listening is her in a different universe trying to get through to ours, and she's got through to you, Josh, for some unknown reason. It's like reason. Interstellar. She's stuck in the bookcase. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or in, or in Harry's boot. But, <laughs> yeah, I mean... A little sex toy cupboard. It's not, little, not little. It's not little. <laughs> it's not little, is it? Let's be honest. It's a filing cabinet. Right, so that's it. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. We're going to be on directly after the game. It will be me, Hannah, or James and uh, me. Struggling to see what we're going to talk about. I'm pretty sure we're going to have quite a bit to talk about. But if But we're not allowed to mention that we had a professional performance if we do. And uh, we are allowed to say that Ange tweaked it, which he will. All right, and whatever right. happens, whatever goes wrong, it's probably going to be Brennan Johnson's fault, apparently. Yeah, we didn't talk about him. Should we? Uh, should we spend should a we minute? Sure. I think Josh. I think Josh has gone. So, I, I, I think that he, he needs, uh, he needs Tony Robbins in his life. He needs someone to, to. Get him to believe in himself a bit more. Now, maybe I'm reading too much into it when I see his facial expressions, which to me look like someone who, whose form is really low. His confidence is on the floor. He's probably being asked to do a job by Ange, which he's doing. And then he goes onto Twitter and people destroy him. Although he does start the press a lot of the time. So he's... I think what Brendan Rodgers is... What have I just said? I think, I think, <laughs> you know, when you said Tony Robbins, I thought you said Tony Robinson. <laughs> no. So what, 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 what is this going? So what, 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 what Brendan Johnson is, 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 is Brendan really, Johnson. Yeah. So what I was trying to say is what I think what, what Brendan Johnson is, is someone who, uh, I forgot my point. Right, that's the, said, that's the you, show. You said he starts the you st- he starts the press. Right. So, so he's, he's, he starts, he starts the press. He does that job. Can, can we get a lot more out of him? Yes. He has been playing Premier one well, he's played Premier League for three seasons now, one in the championship. He's twenty three. Are we gonna see him do more? I believe so. The thing that I don't get is when we were signing him, I mean I spoke to I don't know if I've said this. I s I've got a Nottingham Forest mate and he said he's one of the fastest players you'll ever see. I I don't I don't know I don't I don't see speed. I don't I don't see a lot of things, and that's maybe because he's just right now in a bad place. I don't know. And yeah, maybe at the end of the season sorry. we can talk about it. No, no, that's it. Come. Yeah, and no, I'll say this has sort of been my point sort of all along with Brennan Johnson. I think he does have some good attributes, but 
a tribute. Show you that. Yeah, oh, a tribute. Oh. Attributes. Oh, well, actually, it's a tribute. It's a fuck off. <laughs> um, it's uh, he just doesn't show you that belief, that hunger. He he just lets things pass him by in games, and it's like he's in his mind. He's like, oh well, next time I'll I'll do this differently, and the next time he's like, oh well, this time I'll do it differently. And he just never, never does it, and he just looks so scared, almost, to try anything. Whereas you look at Odderbird the other day, and he was just relentless, like going at going at his man regularly, making some good decisions. Um, maybe the final ball wasn't always there, um, but you know he was still taking his man and using his pace really well. Kulazeski uses his pace really well he's not lightning but he knows how to start up and speed down and I think if Brennan Johnson can get that sort of self belief into him and to be honest if it if Ange isn't able to do that I don't know who can. Tony uh, Robinson to quite frank. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, right, say goodbye guys, say goodbye Josh. Goodbye. Say goodbye Todd. Adios. Goodbye for me. See you later.